Do you have any preference of who goes first? You can go. Maybe, like, maybe take a few minutes and does, uh, just, does anybody know when this is supposed to end? Like, well, lunch is at 1.30. So we have, oh, we got like a little time. All right, cool. So, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. All right, guys. So that was a, I think, uh, just, just quickly. My name is Amy Mosher. I am the strategy and innovation leader at Workforce Central Career Center here for the city of Worcester. So I serve both job seekers and employers. Um, I had run a program specific to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics called STEM Power for the last three years. In the last uh, six months, I've been working almost exclusively on green jobs development for the region, as well as entrepreneurship opportunities and other special projects, which involves other dozens of things. Um, I actually did do my graduate work here at Clark University. I was one of four of the guinea pigs in the initial CDP experiment back in 02 and graduated in 04. Um, and I've also, you know, worked for myself. I've also um, had seven part-time jobs and tried to sew it all together and present them as clients, you know. So it looks like, you know, you've got something going on when you talk to your next client or prospective employer. So I really get it um, when it comes to, you know, really creating opportunities that people want, people want their lives to be inspiring, right? I mean, right, guys? I mean, you don't just have to be a clerk, you know, to, to want to love your life. Um, so as far as some of the things that we, we just heard, I mean, I, I can go into, Alex, I don't know, maybe we'll come back to some of the actual projects and opportunities. I mean, I, I do want to take a moment, I'm not sure if right now, I'd rather sort of facilitate more of an interactive conversation right now, but I would love if anybody's interested to tell you more specifically, very specific opportunities around training and employment, especially in green jobs as well as other entrepreneurship opportunities that are actually happening on the ground. So. Um, so I'd like to get back to that at some point, and Alice, you can let me know when that's a good time. So um, why don't we just kind of have a few comments about what you guys just heard in terms of these different frameworks. What are you seeing as possible for Worcester? Um, and if you're not from Worcester, what are you seeing as possible for where you're from in terms of, you know, what's next? These are some great ideas, but in terms of actionable steps and specific collaborations, what are you seeing possible? Not all at once. <laughs> Loose conversation. Yeah. Four all the different right. questions. Okay. Absolutely. So I wonder, um, I'd like to think about what is the infrastructure mm -hmm. of the social um, the solidarity economy. So when you were talking about Cleveland, I got that there was like some finance issues. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you were asking that question, it was like there's a capacity building piece about the, so, and I don't know. If, and just start big and move small, so that might, and your question was small and asking us to build big, so I don't know if it's appropriate, but I'm really interested in understanding that piece. Okay, so the, the question specific to like, what is the infrastructure necessary to move forward, or perhaps what infrastructure do we currently have in place, almost like an asset mapping, Not that's all we're I think we all pretty much know yeah. what we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know what we need. What, what do we need in terms of what, like, what does that economy need? Great. So, would you look? So, I'm not sure. If Steve, if you want to I take mean, crack, I, have, I have a process suggestion, which is, you know, if, if the ultimate goal here is to spend a lot of time having a conversation, why don't we collect some questions, mm -hmm. and then we could do breakouts, or we could talk about it amongst ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I yeah. I, I mean, it would be nice to have John respond as well. We, so the questions we're talking about are systemic, you know, and, and I think it'd be useful to have uh, folks thinking about, like, on a practical level, how this can be implemented, or what, what the city's already thought about. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to catch you no, no, that's great. Um, why don't you just, John, kind of introduce yourself. I'm sure everybody knows who you are, but um, a little bit of your immediate response, then we'll collect some questions. Go sure. back to. Sure. So, um, sit at the back. <laughs> official. Um, because I am official. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, my name is John O'Dell. I'm the energy efficiency manager for the city of Worcester. And I touch on a lot of this stuff, very interesting uh, plenary, um, uh, very interesting conversations we've had so far, or heard so far uh, in, in this breakout. Um, I want to maybe, at the risk of, uh, I started with the lack and then say the bad news, um, or the tough news, uh, I think it's kind of important that we talk about a few things uh, that are, from, from my position in government, as to why this is uh, so hard. Um, Obviously, it's hard. Everyone recognizes that. If it wasn't, we already would have done it. But 
the, not individually, let me emphasize that, but the idea that's being presented here is for most people who aren't in this room is scary. Scary as hell. They, I mean, it's, it's immediate defensive wall. We, this is not what we do. This is not how we think. You're, you're over there, and you can do your thing over there. Just don't follow me over here. Um, and I think that's a, a, you know, almost when you look at it, it's almost the circle that circles the whole solidarity piece here that, that Emily was referencing. Uh, this is, there's a fundamental piece in my mind that is, that's not been talked about here. It's one, I think it should be added to those, uh, those five pieces in the front. Um, specifically, I'm thinking about on, in terms of outreach, in terms of education. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a genuine and honest disconnect between two major uh, areas, two major parties that, uh, that haven't been spoken about much today. A couple times, Penn mentioned it a little bit earlier uh, uh, just now. But I think we need to really you know, have a conversation about this, dive a bit deep on it. Um, one is on the community outreach, part about the people who aren't at the table here, that should be at the table here. I think that's fundamental. That got touched on a bit. Uh, and needs to be um, uh, part of the equation. But the um, big thing here that doesn't get touched about later is that we need to reach out to the people who have the money, have the assets, can talk, make this happen. I mean, Penn's example, I mean, it's like almost a setup. And thank you, uh, by the way, when, when you spoke here about the biggest stumbling block you've had so far is getting the upfront $150,000, $200,000 capital to take the next step. I mean, and it wasn't, and it, with full recognition that after that step was made, that there would be lots of other problems, but that's a deal breaker. You don't get that, nothing moves forward. And I think everyone here talks about, you know, the foundations and grant monies and how to, you know, work a, a plan based on what their input is as opposed to what the people in the community actually want to, want to have. So I would advocate from, from, a, from a government perspective, I would say the government, uh, the city government, the local government, is where this impact should start. Uh, it's very, uh, you know, I don't have to speak to you guys here, you have a far less smaller voice the higher you go up in the government structure. But local government you can actually talk to. I mean, the fact, you know, you can talk to me right after this tonight. And we can talk, and there are people inside government who are willing to listen, just as there are plenty of folks inside government who really don't want to have anything to do with this. But that's in everywhere, and that's fine. Um, but the fact that there is not enough that there is such a gulf of separation between what's going on and what the government is, uh, the local government even, and what we're trying to do, and outreach to uh, communities, um, uh, neighborhood communities, and people of, of lower income and um, people of color has been, um, how, how, how do I say this uh, tactfully? It's been uh, less than 100% effective, to say the least. It's been, um, there's not been the kind of communication I think that needs to happen uh, to make to move forward on this. There are two, and there's also I think an internal debate that we've <coughs> had here too. Is to, are we talking about fixing the system in, in the broader context? That's saying that um, is capitalism itself the problem, or is it that the way we're doing capitalism is the problem? And I think that's a question that hasn't been answered because that, well, more accurate, I think I've heard two answers to that so far today. Um, and so I think we need to settle on one, and I'm sure there's probably three or four, actually. So I would say that's one thing that we need to touch on. Um, and the other thing is that based on that decision, whatever it may be, I think we then need to see, okay, well, then how do we get that idea into a, essentially an elevator pitch? Something that you can say to someone, say, you know, talking about this, and share that in a way that is non-threatening. Share that in a way that people actually listen. Uh, as an example, one of the things one of the things we're trying to do on the city side is we're just starting a, a pilot program <coughs> for residential energy efficiency projects, where we'll give re rebate people money to do energy efficient projects on their home. Uh, we have about six hundred thousand dollars, and we're gonna. We're going to put that out to folks. Uh, they do certain energy efficiency measures. They got to meet certain criteria. But if they do those things, uh, get a HERS test, which is part of it, so we can actually do some data mapping of, of how the city's energy efficiency uh, is for residential homes. But basically, the idea behind it, the, the principle behind it, is once we do that, and people save money on the utility bills and uh, and increase the comfort of their home, they become maybe not. 
your ally, but they're no longer resistant. You built credibility with them. And I think that's key. We have to build credibility with the people that we need to work with. This is not touching just some people. When we talk about this, this, as Penn and, and Emily very uh, accurately pointed out, um, uh, and Tim pointed out as well too, this is, uh, at the plenary, this touches everything. I mean, when you talk about environmental green justice, that's everything. So, so these fundamental questions of how we how we can get that down to know exactly what needs to be talked about, what we're all in agreement with, and then how to share that in a way that actually resonates with folks um, is, in my mind, a step that hasn't been taken yet, or has been not finalized yet. Let me put it that way. I think, I think many good people here talk, could say, I've been working on it for 20 years, are you kidding me? And that's very true. What I'm saying, it hasn't become cohesive yet, and it does need to happen. That's how movements start. Um, and that's where the change needs to be. But I think there's a lot of groundwork that still needs to be done. And I'll close with one last thing. Um, and that is uh, the recognition that this will take time. This is very, very hard to do from all perspectives. Uh, building credibility is, is, you know, trust is earned. Uh, I'm you know, speaking to the choir, everyone knows that, but I'm shocked by how many times you can recognize it in theory, but don't practice it. In, in your life and in your principles. Um, this is going to be hard. You have to be recognized that there will be many failures as we go forward on this. Um, and I love how I just said we there. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but there will be uh, times where this will seem too hard. I mean, Tim was great when you were talking uh, earlier at the plenary about all the challenges that go with this and how. You, know, you rise up and you have your bad days, you wish you could leave, and then, uh, but on the good days, it really made sense that you know, you're, you're making a difference and you couldn't think of, you know, bring on the next one. Well, I can tell you right up front that you probably have more of the bad days up front than the good days. I mean, from, I can speak from my side on the government side that that often is the case, but I recognize that the goal is good and that if we come in with that attitude, I think we can have, uh, you know, it's, uh, what did Margaret Mead say? What was it? Uh, never never doubt. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, um, uh, I mean, that's where it starts. And here we are. So, thanks.